Now, cricket, if the weather stays fine over the final two days at Lords, England's cricketers may have a battle to keep their lead in the Ashes series. Australia have taken control of the second uh, test thanks to some superb bowling from Glenn McGrath, who took eight for 38. England were all out for 77 their lowest ever score against Australia at Lords this century. And by the close of the third day, the Aussies reached 131 for two in reply. That's a lead so far of 54. It was perhaps an odd way to start the day. Firstly, there were patches of blue in the sky. Secondly, Shane Warne opened the bowling for Australia. That was to the liking of Graham Thorpe, but not to Mark Taylor. The Australian captain brought on Paul Rifle instead, and the wicket of Thorpe duly followed. John Crawley didn't look comfortable on a pitch which was beginning to spring some surprises. At the other end, though, there was a classic battle between Hussein and Rifle. First, the bowler would take the upper hand, then the batsman. Crawley didn't get the chance to play himself in. McGrath removed him with a gentle outswinger for his fourth wicket of the innings, and England were five down and perhaps hoping that the heavens would open. There was a 15-minute delay for rain, but first ball back, Australia were in business again. Hussain became McGrath's fifth victim, and Robert Croft, number six. Darren Goff at least gave the crowd something to cheer about. But after that, the applause was all for McGrath. He took the wickets of both Goff and Canick to finish with figures of 8 for 38, the best ever by an Australian bowler in an Ashes test. England, too, had a statistic for the history books. 77 was their lowest innings at Lords since 1888. Things seemed to be going from bad to worse, with Crawley forced to take over the gloves from the injured Alex Stewart, but Goff soon had Taylor on his way. And Blewett, too, should have been dismissed, but for an almost unbelievable mix-up in the England slip cordon. That was the signal for the South Australian to cut loose as he almost single-handedly led the run chase before yet another rain delay. But this time it worked in England's favour as Blewett fell to Croft for 45. Philip Martin, Sky News. The weather at Lords. The play didn't start until 20 to 6 this evening, but in the hour and a half or so they played. Matt Elliott completed his maiden test century for Australia. The Aussies at the close, 213 for 7. That's a lead of 136 runs so far. And with a declaration expected early tomorrow morning, England could yet have a testing final day. It could only happen in cricket. After waiting nearly six and a half hours to restart this ill-fated second test, the umpires had to hold back Andy Caddick so the first ball could be delivered bang on time. Australia knew their options were somewhat limited. If they were to make an early declaration and attempt to bowl out England cheaply for a second time, they needed to make runs fast, and Matthew Elliott showed every sign of doing just that. But Mark War's cavalier approach gave England the breakthrough they wanted, when his hook shot went straight to Devon Malcolm. This time the quick bowler didn't waste his chance. Shane Warne went without scoring, a simple catch for Nasser Hussain. And when Steve War quickly followed his brother back to the pavilion for a golden duck, LBW to Caddick, this remarkable match had taken yet another turn. Bevan stayed long enough to make one quick boundary before he was caught behind off Caddick. And yet another shower gave Mark Taylor time for a little reflection, but Australia didn't take their cue for a declaration. Instead, Matthew Elliott returned to the crease to make his 100, and England face a nervous day tomorrow to save this game. Pete Barclough, Sky News. The opening partnership of 162 between the captain Mike Atherton and Mark Butcher kept the Aussies out and that proved enough to keep England's 1-0 lead in the series intact. There was one brief spell of anxiety when England lost three quick rickets but the two captains eventually agreed the draw when England declared their second innings on 266 for four. England go to Old Trafford still one up in the series thanks to a splendid opening partnership between Atherton and Butcher. Despite an anxious start, the pair gave their side Put just the platform they wanted. And Mark Taylor will be ruining this drop catch off rifle. It was a stroke of luck that Butcher needed as he went on for a knock that should ensure his place in the third test. Atherton also lived dangerously at times and McGrath was clearly convinced he'd gloved this vicious delivery. 
Is it gloved or is it a ball? But the England captain survived to score 77 before losing his wicket in unfortunate circumstances when he stepped back onto his own stumps. Alex Stewart was next to go, caught in the deep off McGrath for just 13. Down to long leg. And comfortably caught. And Nasser Hussain went for a duck. A superb caught and bowl from Shane Warne. Good flighted delivery from Warne. Exactly Mark Butcher Warne. also fell to a beautiful delivery from the spinner. Ah! England were rocking for a time, but they had the man for the job in John Crawley. A glorious stroke from John Crawley and with Graham Thorpe providing ideal support at the other end it was only a matter of time before the Australians called it a day and that's for the gap no real power but England are well aware the poor Lord's weather has given them an unexpected chance to regroup but they'll also have been heartened by their defiant batting on the last day Pete Barclough Sky News